Good morning, everyone. Morning as I'm filming this. We are in the second class of our study of Ecclesiastes entitled Everything is Meaningless, right? So let's begin with prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all your amazing gifts, best of all the gift of a Savior. We thank you for the wisdom in knowing that you are our Lord, that you will always be with us and everything you do will be for our good. Bless our time as we study your word. Amen. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, three types of meaning. We reviewed this from last time. There's temporal, temporal or short term. We do things so we feel as if life has a meaning. The problem are shortcomings. Well, it's short term. It won't last forever, and eventually what we do will be forgotten. Moral, meaning comes from what we do. But here's the problem. Who decides what is right and moral and what is wrong and immoral? So if people in the world say, well, more, more, there's moral meaning in life. Well, what is moral to you? And then cosmic or meta narrative, all things are part of a greater story. Last time we used the analogy, different chapters making up one book. Now, in what ways can we as believers say that each of these things give true godly purpose and meaning to our lives? Well, short term, let's say I have to visit a shut in. I'm bringing God's word and bringing communion to that person. That short term, but it does have meaning. Moral meaning comes from what we do, and God is the one who decides what is right. And meta narrative, of course, in all things, God works for the good of his people. Everything has a purpose, everything has a plan according to God. Now, under the sun versus over and beyond the sun. Solomon viewed things from under the sun, meaning from an earthly perspective, but the proper perspective is to view them over beyond the sun from God's perspective. And remember, our plan was to take an overarching look and then break it down. So today we focus on the fact that if we only look under the sun from an earthly perspective, wisdom is meaningless. Now, how does our world define wisdom? I think our world confuses knowledge and wisdom, or information and wisdom, I should say, People say, I have a lot of information, therefore I am wise. Well, is it good information? Is it right? Is it solid? What does it mean to be wise in today's world? I heard someone use the definition that wisdom is knowledge guided by experience. I think that's a pretty good definition. What our world means, again, I think it just means more, I have information. But you can do very foolish things with information, that's not wise. Can you think of an exam of examples when we as a society did something that at the time we thought was wise, but later on we realized how stupid or dumb it was? Maybe the most obvious one would be using leeches many years ago, thinking that it had some medical benefit. I was talking to another pastor yesterday about this, and he directed me to a book where it said that every hundred years, we jettison 50% of our medical techniques because we realized we were wrong or they weren't doing anything. So you can make a, a long list of things that at one point we thought were wise. Later on, we realized not so. Look at Ecclesiastes. I, the teacher, was king over Israel uh, over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. Now, Solomon tried finding meaning in this life under the sun by using his wisdom. Why is it noteworthy that he did this? Well, remember who he is. The Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. So Solomon trying to find wisdom, uh, purpose and meaning and wisdom is important because he's the wisest person who ever lived. And this proves it. God gave Solomon wisdom and a very great insight and understanding, as measureless as the sand of the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East and Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 pair of Proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He spoke about plant life. He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. So again, Solomon trying to find meaning through wisdom might be the best person to do it. So how did things turn out for him? <laughs> what a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I've seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I said to myself, look, I've increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. 
I've experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly, but I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow, the more knowledge, the more grief. Simply put, his experiment to find meaning and wisdom failed. Why? Because he was looking under the sun. And we'll talk about specific meanings and reasons, and here's one of them. Under the sun, wisdom can't lead to a life of cosmic or moral meaning because understanding what the world is cannot logically lead to what the world should be. And maybe a simple translation is, yeah, knowing what the world should, should be doesn't make it what it is. I can understand how something works. That doesn't mean I can control it or change it. <clears throat> so to prove it, think of areas where our wisdom or scientific knowledge has increased tremendously. And here's three examples, understanding of human life, technological advancement, and engineering. Yet what is the general feeling about abortion? I mean, we can do 3D images of a child in the womb. We know it's a child, we know it's a human being, but in general, abortion, well, it's, it's a woman's right. Are all computers and phone used for proper moral purposes? <laughs> Certainly not. We have the advancement, but are we using it in a wise way? And what did engineering advancements bring about in 1914 and 1939? Well, that's the start of World War I and II. We had newer, bigger thing, ways of killing and blowing one another up. And why is this the case? Solomon said, what is crooked cannot be straightened. What might be the most crooked thing in the world? The human heart, the sinful human heart. We may make these advancements. We may show our wisdom in one way, but we use those things foolishly, improperly, or even sinfully. Even if we understand how or why something works, who decides the right way for that wisdom to be applied? Under the sun, each person decides. You do what you want to do. Does that add meaning to life? In a way, yes. I want to make myself happy. For many people, that's their purpose. My question is, has it worked? Are we happier now than in the past? I would say no. And Solomon agrees with that. So wisdom is meaningless, one, because it cannot tell us how to live and what our true purpose is. And to prove that, take evolution to its logical end. We are nothing but a bunch of cells thrown together by mere accident. We are highly evolved animals. In time, we die, and that's it. To understand that, you know, it's not true, but to say, oh, we understand this, we know this, that doesn't add any meaning to life, except my meaning, my purpose is to live as long as I possibly can, because after, after I'm gone, it's over. So yes, one reason wisdom is meaningless, under the sun wisdom can't lead to a life of cosmic or moral meaning, because understanding what the world is cannot logically lead to what the world should be. The second reason, under the sun wisdom can't lead to a life of cosmic, that means all things work together for good, or moral meaning because with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. Basically, the more you know, the more you realize how messed up the world is. And summarize what you see in the news each night or read in the paper each day, it kind of proves it. You see a few stories about, you know, little Jimmy helping grandma across the street, but mostly it's here's all the horrible, terrible things happening and the local section, here's the horrible, terrible things happening closest to you. Now we're basing this again on a book called Your Life Has Meaning from Luke George Thompson. And just a, a brief paragraph about a week in the life. He's a pastor. And he says, just this past week, I counseled two different men grieving over two different close friends who were dying of cancer and whose deaths were Im imminent. I prayed with the South Sudanese refugee who, having been separated from his nephew during a violent attack, didn't know where in the world his nephew could be found. I set up an appointment with a young man who had written to me in an email, we need to talk. I can't live like this anymore. I need help. I encouraged one young lady struggling with an unplanned pregnancy. I contacted a pastor about a Muslim convert to Christianity whom I was sending his way, a convert that couldn't go back home for fear of death. And that's only this past week and only what I can remember off the top of my head. The more you get to know people, the more you learn about this world. And so the more you learn about the rampant injustice, pain, and suffering. If you follow under the sun thinking, there is no meta-narrative, meta no story made up of many chapters. Things just happen. So recall the stuff we see on the news and read in the paper. If there's no greater story, what one word must we use as we see these things happening? A word which might be Solomon's favorite, that word is meaningless. If it has no purpose, if it has no plan, these bad things happen, it's all meaningless. <clears throat> now, Martin Luther at his day job, he wrote this. Anyone who sees much and knows how it is to go cannot help becoming angry. He thinks, oh, how miserably and dreadfully things happen in the world. What is the source of this anger and indignation except much wisdom? For anyone who is very wise has many reasons to become angry 
as one who daily sees many things that are wrong. They're making the same point. The wiser you get, the more you understand about how things work, the more frustrated you are because it all falls apart. So yes, wisdom is meaningless because without a meta narrative to put the sufferings and injustices of this life into context, the pursuit of knowledge leads to an endless weary journey of trying to straighten out something that is hopelessly crooked. Again, you may know how things are supposed to go, but you can't change them. And it seems without a meta narrative, there is no purpose or meaning. So there was reason one, reason two, like we just said, the more you know, the more you see the, the struggles in life. And number three, under the sun, wisdom doesn't change the fact that the same fate overtakes everyone. <clears throat> Solomon writes this, I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise have eyes in their heads while the fool walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtakes them both. Then I said to myself, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said to myself, this too is meaningless. For the wise, like the fool, will not be long remembered. The days have already come when both have been forgotten. Like the fool, the wise too must die. Not very happy stuff, but again, that's under the sun thinking. Now there's a section in the book, it's called If the Atheists Are Right. And the author says, if the atheists are right that there is no rhyme or reason to this universe, and it simply stretches on into infinite, a time will come when ev for every scientist and learned person, when their work is utterly forgotten, along with its effects, it will not matter one whit whether they existed and discovered the things they did. It's all going to fade away. We're all going to die. In time, it's all going to mean nothing. Solomon makes the same point. I also saw under the sun this example of wisdom that greatly impressed me. There was once a small city with only a few people in it, and a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, and built huge siege works against it. Now there lived in that city a man, poor but wise, and he saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered that poor man. So I said, wisdom is better than strength. But the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are no longer heeded. So three, wisdom is meaningless because in the end all will die, and all that's been accomplished or understood will mean nothing to them and maybe even the next generations. I know this is depressing, but again, we're trying to point out and say that's the way under the sun, thinking only from an earthly perspective, wisdom, where that's where it ends. Now we are obsessed with what we know or what we can learn and think, oh, we're so wise. Well, we just talked about the shortcomings of wisdom, but also realize how much we don't know. And the author talks about the circle dot example. He was speaking to, he was arguing with someone who was an atheist and he took a giant pad of paper, like you know, two feet by three feet, three feet. And he drew a huge circle on the piece of paper. <clears throat> and he said, imagine this is the universe. And then he took a pen and made a little dot. And he said, this is probably accurate representing about how much we understand the universe, right? This tiny little dot. And then he said, how arrogant are we to think that there's all this white space and yet we can say we know everything. We know there's no God. This whole point was we hardly know anything, but yet we are quick to think we're so wise. Now Solomon was wise in what he knew and what he didn't know. Look at what he says throughout the book. Who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish, meaning nobody does. Who knows if the human spirit rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. For who knows what is good for a person in life during the few and meaningless days that they pass through like a shadow. Whatever exists is far off and most profound. Who can discover it? So there's humility there. And our question is, if the wisest man ever can't find purpose or meaning for life under the sun using his profound wisdom, how foolish for us to think we can. That is very foolish. If Solomon couldn't do it, and he's a hundred times wiser than us, <clears throat> how could we? So wisdom can't bring meaning? No, it can. But it must be wisdom over or beyond the sun. And when Solomon sees things that way, what does he know? What is he wise about? And these are all paraphrases of what he says in the book. God made everything beautiful in its time. God has set eternity in the human heart. We know there's more. God's own knowledge about the future is unfathomable and unknowable. God knows what to do. He is truly wise. God has given us the gift of being able to enjoy food and drink and work. And God's work endures forever. And God desires people to respect and revere him. Those are the things we know. We see that from an over or beyond the sun um, uh, perspective. And that gives meaning. Knowing this is true wisdom. And what one thing we add to the list, the greatest over or beyond the sun wisdom one can have, that God is our Savior. 
that through Christ, he has forgiven our sins and welcomed us into his family. That makes us the wisest people ever. So how does having proper wisdom add meaning to life? We don't see it from an earthly perspective. We don't think, well, I'm wise. I understand things. Therefore, my life will have meaning because under the sun, again, we see how bad things are. We can't change them. And we know what our fate ultimately will be. But when we look at things from godly perspective, we say, I know what my purpose is. I am wise to the fact that God is my savior. And that gives me meaning as I, well, me personally, as I deal with my wife, as I deal with my children, as I do my job as a pastor, as a friend, as a sibling, it adds meaning. And how does it help us understand why things are as they are and why things happen as they do? Because the ultimate wisdom is at work, God's wisdom. We may not always understand it, but we know that he is doing everything for the good of his people. He has a plan in everything. <clears throat> I really like this quote from Isaac Beshevis, singer. There is little comfort in the science of today and in its cosmology. It has filled the universe with idols we can never love or even respect. Only the most insensitive can accept the notion that the universe is a result of a cosmic bomb which exploded some 20 billion years ago and continues to run away from itself forever. No matter how the human brain might grow, it will always come back to the idea that God has created a heaven and an earth, man and animals, with a will and a plan, and that despite all the evil life undergoes, there is a purpose in creation and eternal wisdom. He's talking about the natural knowledge of God. You, you got to be super callous to say, well, just just a big accident and we're just globs of cells and then we fade away. No, in our heart of hearts, we know there is a God. And when we take that natural knowledge and fill in the gap with God's revealed knowledge, we understand there is a plan, a purpose. Above all, that plan or purpose is to save people through his son. And then knowing that their plan and purpose is to live for him. And a summary from the author, way better than anything I could give. He says... The first two chapters of Genesis give us more than a God of order. This creator did more than simply create a complex yet ordered and principled world. He created people, other people, people he wanted to be with. He wanted a world of not only organisms, but families and relationships. And he wanted them to be in his family. He wanted to walk with them, talk with them, care for them along the river banks of their botanical and zo zoological paradise. This God loves to shelter, to preserve, to empower, to give what is good. Knowing this, God gives meaning to science, its applications, and its wisdom. This wisdom, Solomon says, is indeed a good thing and benefits those who see the sun. It is a shelter and preserves those who have it. It makes a person more powerful than ten rulers and is better than weapons of war. These are all quotes. When the scientist combines the intellectual accomplishments of her mind with a hopeful and joyous heart, a heart that desires to shelter, preserve, and empower, a heart that desires to heal, make flourish, create, and strengthen relationships. She can be assured that she does what God loves. She restores her little corner of this spoiled world more to what God made it to be. She gives his love a face and hands. So when we understand it's God's wisdom, our wisdom is ultimately meaningless, earthly wisdom. God's wisdom gives real true purpose and meaning. We use the gifts God's given us to serve him and to serve others. And I think that's it. So again, main point, earthly wisdom lets us down. Godly wisdom, knowing who he is and what he desires, that gives true meaning and purpose to our lives. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to let me know. God bless, and I'll see you next time.